What's going on guys? We're about to get into some very different type of stuff. Today's video, how to create cash flow in your business, the art of the offer. In this video, we're going way, 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 way back. And I wanna tell you about a story of how I launched the upscale garage sale. And I'm gonna tell you what went through this and the multiple layers to launching the upscale garage sale. When I first got in the storage auction business, what we used to do is have garage sales at my house and at my partner's house. Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. And one of the things that we would do is we would name it. And this is something that's funny. You know, you would talk about having uh, a garage sale or just putting up a sign that says garage sale, household sale. Incidentally, because I used to keep up with this stuff, I noticed that when we used the upscale garage sale, we got 50% more participants. 50% more people came to the upscale garage sale than folks came to a garage sale. And this is one of the things that you have to take into account when establishing your business, establishing your brand, putting things together. I know this is gonna sound somewhat complex, but let me explain. When we first started selling the stuff from the garage sales, not the garage sales, but from the storage auction units, um, we didn't have a name. We didn't know what we were doing, we had no clue. So we would just put signs out there. And then one night I was um, in a mood and I was like, you know what? We're gonna call this the upscale garage sale. Right. And typically when we would have a garage sale, we would have the signs up and people would come in waves. And the first wave would be the people who would see the first signs. Right. I remember the morning of I put these signs out, the upscale garage sale signs. We literally had 50 people show up the first hour. Now, how big of a stretch is that? Normally we would have 10 to 12, 10 to 12. We had 5X the number of people showed up to the upscale garage sale. And it was like, whoa, this is kind of interesting. This is uh, pretty mind blowing. And then we began to launch the upscale garage sales each and every weekend and the numbers remain consistent. Then for some reason, it was a long week and I just made up some garage sale signs because typically the garage sale signs would get damaged, stolen, and I didn't put the upscale garage sale on there. And I noticed a difference with this sale. We made literally 75% less money than we normally were making, 75%. So I was like, whoa, 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 this is pretty interesting, right? So I went back to the upscale garage sales. And then when we moved into the warehouse, guess what was on the signs? The upscale garage sale, because that name, it pulled people in, it pulled people in. So one of the things is in creating an offer, you gotta have something that pulls people in, that literally captures their attention and makes them go, huh, that's interesting, let's go check it out. That's the first thing you want. You wanna get the person in that moment, oh, that's interesting, let's go check that out. Then the second thing you wanna do, and this is something that we learned over a period of time, is you must have the proper stuff at the door. And this is something that Target, Marshalls, any store does this. You ever notice when you go to the store and you need milk and eggs, you literally have to walk through the whole store. The milk and eggs are always in the back of the store. Let me tell you why, there's a reason. If the milk and eggs were at the front of the store, the store sales would dramatically drop because this is what happens you know that you need milk and eggs and you know that the milk and eggs are typically they're going to be in the back of the store or going to be on the side of the store typically they're always in the back 
This is to get you to walk through the store. This is to get you to pay attention to other items like the milk, the cheese, the eggs. This is stuff you need. This is stuff you need for your breakfast or to cook. You need this stuff. All the other stuff that you walk by is stuff that you may want. And this is the stores like Target does it, Walmart does it, any grocery store you can think of it. Name one grocery store that has the milk, the eggs, and the cheese at the front of the store. Name one, you can't. Because no store is going to do that because this isn't something that they just happened upon. This is something that stores have been studying for decades, decades. It is very rare. Well, I have never seen it. I've never seen any store with the milk, eggs, and cheese at the front. So one of the things that we would do in our uh, garage sales is we would put the best stuff up front, the best stuff, and things that people needed that would be in the back. Worked every time. I remember I bought this unit that was full of tools. The whole unit was nothing but tools. Crescent wrenches, uh, chrome wrenches, tools, screwdrivers, jack, nothing but tools. And I got this unit really, really cheap because no one was at the auction. And essentially all you saw at the beginning was boxes. I got this unit for like maybe 50, 60 bucks. And um, I remember tools, okay, tools. Men are gonna be looking for the tools. We're gonna put the tools and once again, not only did we put the tools in the back, because we knew the tools would really, really go, we put signs up that said the tools, where the tools were. Take a wild guess at how much money we made from these tools. And let me give you the framework. The unit was a 10 by 20 packed full of tools. Red wrenches, red, uh, wrenches, saws, drills, um, anything you could think of that was a tool and a few workbenches, which we put in the front. Now, why we put the workbenches? Because workbenches are nice, but there's only a certain amount of people who are going to need a workbench. But the rat, the, 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 the wrenches, the screwdrivers, the uh, drills, the saws, all, all that went in the back. All that went in the back. And um, this unit, a lot of stuff was heavy because we would get these tool kits, these boxes of tools. And just, you know, I, I mean, it took a minute to set all that stuff up because I got this tool unit once we were in the warehouse. And essentially you had to go through the front of the warehouse, the bedroom sets, the living room sets, the washers and dryers and stuff. And the tools were in the back. All right, unit cost me 50, 60 bucks. First hour of selling the tools. First hour, because I advertised it on Craigslist as well. We made $7,000 selling the tools. And that was about maybe 25% of the tools. 50, $60 unit. It was really, really quite good. But once again, as we went along of having the upscale garage sale, because the first thing we found out was having a name for the garage sale made a huge difference. Then the second thing we found out is how we set up. Uh, at one point we set up where all of the needy stuff was up front and we saw that we made less money. So the needy stuff always went in the back and there was always a sign and not one sign, not one. There would be three to four signs. One, as soon as they get there, one in the warehouse and literally signage leading them to where we wanted them to go. So number one, we had to figure out the name. Number two, we had to figure out the setup. Number three, we had to figure out the placement. And here's something that's going to sound a little crazy. Each one of those action moves made a huge, huge number on our overall sales numbers. I mean, it was like literally just the name got us twice as many people. That's huge for a garage sale, it's huge. Then once we learn the setup, and once we learn to put the really good stuff in the back, because literally they had to walk through all of this stuff to get to the good stuff. And it created a very different element. It created a very different uh, level of prosperity. And this is how we developed a cash flowing business. This is one of the things that we set up, we put together that became very, very 
important for our business because essentially the upscale garage sale, that was cash money that we put in our pockets. And why would we put the cash money in our pockets? It's been many, many, many years. So I don't want to hear any of this like, you gotta worry about the internal revenue service. No, we don't. Number one, my business partner, uh, rest in peace, Francine, has departed. And number two, I'm not given enough information to get me in trouble. So that's another thing. But once we figured this stuff out, and one night I was sitting down, I was looking over the numbers and stuff, and I said, Francine, changing the name, changing the setup, changing the structure, we're making eight times the money that we normally would make if we just had a regular sign and we didn't have the structure. And she said, I can believe it because every time that we found something new, a little wrinkle, and we would do it and we would uh, work on it, it made a huge, huge difference in terms of the financial prosperity. Huge, 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 huge difference. Um, and that's one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about because when you see this, it's probably gonna be the 22nd, 21st, 22nd, I don't, I'm not sure. And I'm getting ready to make some very, very big changes going back to what I learned years and years and years ago. Uh, one of the things, and th this, this has kind of been my problem. I'm gonna claim it as my problem. It's not the audience's problem or the people who are looking for stuff. It's my problem. One of the things that I have witnessed over this last duration is that people give you an example there's a girl here on youtube she's on instagram she they've been on shows um they're making a lot of money from a bad business product which would be airbnb ton of money now i have said what i wanted to say i did not investigate them like camille did and camille found out they don't even have 11 Airbnbs, they have two, which meant that 99% of that money came from the Airbnb training. Now, wh wh where am I going with this? And th this is something as an ethical content creator that's very, very infuriating that I would go out and put out something that you can use that will make a big difference in your financial life. But because a lot of the stuff that I was putting out wasn't part of the hype train like Airbnb, even though Airbnb is doing quite badly at the moment, Airbnb still has a lot of push. Airbnb has a lot of people still pushing that content. So even though Airbnb is failing, there's still a lot of people pushing it where in the midst of this, a couple can come online and literally make $3 million pushing Airbnb training, even though for most people it's not going to work. And once again, it's, it's very, very infuriating. It's very, very frustrating. But just like I went back and I looked at the whole setup, when we were doing the upscale garage sale, we had no clue to how garage sales work. So you've got millions and millions and millions of people out there who don't understand how things work, which if there's enough sizzle, there's enough sensationalism behind it, they'll usually pick it up. And that 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 got me to thinking. That got me really, really to thinking. So number one, I'm not going to create anything that's not going to help you. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Make sure I say that plainly and clearly. I'm not gonna create anything that's not gonna help you but this is what I'm going to do starting in March. And uh, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to start over with highlight stuff. I'm going to start over with, because like once again, and this was, once again, this is a point of frustration. I literally said that I am not going to do any uh, new training until I get to a certain point. And I had people who would buy the cheaper courses. This is a common issue. And then once again, I, I did videos saying what was gonna happen, what you should buy, what you would get. And I would get people who would um, not listen to me and go out and buy what they wanted and then harass me in the comments. Hey, I'm in the, and I'm like, look, I, I said what I was gonna do. And that was very, very infuriating. And it was like, okay, all right. 
So this is what's going to happen. I'm getting ready to do all new training. There will not be any stuff from an old course. There will be new training, new lives, everything. So with that, uh, anyone who bought an old course, you're not going to get automatic access to the new stuff. It's not happening. So it's, once again, all of this stuff is going to be brand new. I am not going to use any of the old websites, not using any of them. And what I want people to do who are interested in this new training, this new level. And once again, YouTube is going to be a huge, huge part of this. YouTube is the reason that I made millions. And like I have literally come on here, said it, showed it. And I still have people who are clueless to how the process works. So essentially I come on YouTube, I speak about a certain topic. Then I create a course about a topic and this is how I make money. It's quite simple, but you've got people who are, um, I'm going to say they are functionally illiterate. You can show them, you can paint a picture and they still won't get it. These are the people who need the most help. And these are the people with the least amount of money. Interestingly. So, so this, this is going to be a new training. It's going to be heavily about YouTube, heavily about YouTube and the things. Because if I was not an ethical content creator, this channel would be, you know, I could just put stuff out and just leave out the important details. I could do that, but that's just not who I am. And that's just not how I operate. So once again, we're give me a little time. I'm gonna get it together. And we're gonna have live training on Sunday because there is no football season. And I'm not that big of a basketball fan. I know we're about to go into the basketball highlights and all this other stuff, but I don't really care about that. And we're gonna get into a lot of training, a lot of online training, because um, once again, if you are a regular run of the mill person, the fastest way to make money is to start a service business. But you will literally have people, you don't have a service business, man. And and if you're one of those people who need to actually see me do it for you to find out there's faith, uh, I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm just not going to do a service business. I'm just not. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and I'm going to keep evolving and pushing on the things I can. If you notice, there are no shorts on this channel. There's a reason. And I'll be talking about that in the YouTube course. I'll be talking about that and a lot of stuff, because here's one of the things I can tell you. If you notice, I've redesigned this channel. Now, in the beginning, it's going to suck. I've gotten way less views because I got rid of a lot of videos. But ultimately, this is going to be a very uh, profitable channel because it's already started to turn. I figured it would take like four or five months, but it's literally second month. It started to turn and the third month it's going to turn again. And we're going to be talking about YouTube, creating courses and writing blogs and creating online businesses because that's what I do. I, I no longer have an offline business. Even though I had multiple offline businesses before I came to YouTube, but going ahead, we're getting ready to do some new training, some new stuff. There may be another YouTube channel change. I know for you folks who don't want to subscribe, I know that's going to just kick you in. Hey, you know, thank the Lord that you were here while you were here. But if you got to go, you got to go. Uh, once again, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's coming, a whole bunch of training that we're going to get into March 1st. So once again, just subscribe to the channel. I mean, how hard would it be like, all right, it literally takes six seconds to subscribe, but you want me to keep the channel to the same name so you can find me easily because you don't want to subscribe. That's one of the things that's got to go because one of the things that I've noticed is when I reset the channel, I got rid of a lot of people and I got rid of a lot of foolishness. I got rid of a lot of clownish and clown stuff. So this is one of the things that's going to happen. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I will be posting the content starting March 1st, which I believe is going to be next week. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, comment, and dig in because we're about to go nuts.